Welcome to the Auction Project, our capstone exercise for Excel 2016. In this lesson, we'll be covering the following skills. Working with worksheets, formatting and merging cells, working with formulas and functions again, in particular the text functions, conditional functions, and statistical functions. And this will be building on the ones we've used before, but combining them with other functions like the if statement. We're then going to be creating charts from data ranges, creating tables, which is a new item, working with table addresses, which is slightly different than what you've seen before with the absolute and relative addresses. And then we're going to be using nested functions, where you put one function inside of another function. Our goal for this project is to build a functioning auction program. We're going to do that with using this beginning spreadsheet that I've already laid out the basics for you. Now, it actually was an auction that was held once. We've taken out most of the information and some of the names have been changed and so forth. But it actually is real data that we're going to be working with. And we're going to take that and then change it so we can actually have a sales receipt, a dashboard that we could use during the auction, and then a listing that you can print out to show the various consigners how much they earned at this auction. Let's begin by reviewing the downloaded file for this. You'll find this file in our online classroom area. Now this workbook contains four worksheets. There's a sale page, which has all the winning bids and the bidder, but notice there's no lot description in there to describe what they are. This will be used during the sale updated live where they could go through and put in the final bid at the, as soon as it closes and then also put in the buyer for that. Now the next page is the lots page. Ideally this would be set up well before the auction where you input all the different lots for sale and then assign the lot number. You would put in the consigner information and so forth. The next page then is our buyers page. Now the buyers page is going to be a registration page for us. So during the beginning of the event when people are coming in you would input their name and address here and assign them a buyer number which you would record and then give them a card which has that number on it. Lastly then is the sale receipt. This will be something we can print out at the end of the day to show them how much money they owe and something they can take with them for their own expenses. Now with this sheet we're going to do something different. We're going to use tables. We're going to organize all the data into these various tables. Now tables give us some additional functions. We can sort, we can filter, and also make sure the data is consistent in that when we sort and filter, it considers that each row is a full record and it will go with it no matter how we sort it so we don't lose information or hit the wrong person, the wrong buyer number, and so forth. Additionally, there's some nice functions where when we want to add something to it, at the very bottom we just put some more information and it automatically gets included into the table. It also gives us a quick summary of details available at the bottom. We can average it, we can tell it to give us totals, subtotals, counts, and so forth. But there's also a change in the way that formulas are addressed in tables, and we'll be drawing attention to that. Now to create a table only takes a couple of steps. We're going to do this for each one of the sheets except for the sales receipt. On each sheet then, select all the data. Now the easiest way to do that is just to click into the data somewhere and use Control A on your keyboard and that should select the entire area. Though if you hit control A twice it'll get the entire spreadsheet out to 10,000 to the right and hundreds and hundreds of thousands going down. So make sure that you only get the area that we're looking to work with. Once you have it selected then click home, format as a table on the menu bar and then select the color theme that you like. You will get a little message that popped up and it says where is the data for your table? That's the area you selected. Make sure it shows the right information. And below there is a little checkbox. This says my table has headers. Now the headers are the items going across the top along the columns, which says like sale number, first name, last name, and so forth. With these labels then, it will make these the headers of our table. If we uncheck this, it will add an additional row that says column one, column two, column three. And we don't want to use that. We want to use the headers we have. So make sure that is selected and then hit OK. So here's my workbook and I'm going to select then on the sales table. I'm just going to click somewhere here in the data. Control A. Then I want to scroll down and make sure that I did indeed get all the data. Sometimes the Control A won't work if there's a break in this information. It looks like we have all of it. So now then I'm going to go to the home ribbon. Over here on the right, format as table. Hit the drop down. Select any one of these that you find interesting. And there's the message box saying, did we get the right range? Yes, and here my table has headers and it is checked. So I'll leave that alone and hit OK. Now continue this on each one of the pages. Clicking in the table, Control A, 
verifying that you have just what you want selected, format as table, and choose a table style. Again, selecting OK. And then our last one, the buyer's table, we'll do the same thing. Control A, verify. Then choose format as table and one of the selections. One of the features of tables are these filters that have been added across the top of it. Next to each one of those headers we talked about earlier, there's a little drop down menu. That allows you to sort by smallest to largest. We can sort by color if you've been using color coding on your various cells. We can then also select various items and like only seeing one or two or maybe just those items that are from bidder three and so forth. So you have a full checkbox menu. And then also if we go into the filters, you can say allow for top 10 filters. And so you only have to see the top 10 customers or the highest 10 auction items and so forth. Now the table totals function is an interesting function that's been added. Now we're not going to be using it for this assignment, but I'd like you to see how it works. So under table tools, you have to first click in your table. A new menu item will pop up. Then go to tools, design, and look for the total row checkbox. We'll check that. Then at the very bottom of your list, another row will be added that says total. You can then click in the column you're interested in having a total on, hit the drop down item, and select from average, count, count numbers, min, max, and other statistical functions. I don't want to use it for this one though, because we're going to be doing something with subtotals later, and if we forget to remove it, it gets mixed in with the numbers and we'll throw everything off. If you haven't done it already then, take a moment to create tables from all three lists. Again, select anywhere in the table, press Control and A to select the entire table. Verify you have selected just the table area though, then click Home up on the ribbon bar, format as table, and then select the style that you like. By default, the tables are given a name, table 1, 2, and 3, consecutive order of when they're being built. But you can change this table name so it makes more sense in your formulas. Click anywhere in the table, then up on the menu bar, Table Tools and Design. Now look over to the far left under Properties and click where it says Table 2, or Table 3, and so forth. Click in that box, backspace the name out, and put a new name in. Now there can't be any spaces in the name, but what you can use is that camel case where you put some of it in lower and then some in uppercase, like shown here. Once you have the name in there, hit enter and do the next one. Let's take a look at these functions then. So in the table here, remember earlier we hit control A and selected the entire table. We then went to the home ribbon and chose format as table and selected a table style. Now these, these are the drop down buttons I was speaking of. We can go through now and select individuals if you only want to see a certain individual. We could then look to see everybody who was not from California just by unchecking California. It then moves it down to just those. Now the totals area up here, table tools, design, totals row. You notice this new row was added. So now let's say I'm interested in seeing not this one, but maybe just the number of buyers. So I come over here to buyers, hit the drop down, and let's count that. So it shows there are seven buyers on the screen. If I remove my filter, it then brings all the buyers back. And let's check that total at the bottom. Too far, there it is. And we have 69. Now we can see that because there are 69 buyer numbers, but maybe there you have to be a skip in the numbers sometimes. So this gives me another look at that. Now again, I don't want to have this stay here now because it will mess things up later on. So let's turn that off if you've turned it on. So take a moment to go through your workbook create three tables, one for each of these pages, and nothing for the sales receipt. We'll be using that separately.